Welcome to the Glow Up Podcast, where we share stories of success and give you actionable steps to help you to level up in every aspect of your life. I'm your host, Lene Hippolyte. Let's get started. All right, so you guys are going to love this episode. We have Chelsea Gariello, who is dropshipper, talking about her story of getting into dropshipping and getting into the e-commerce side of things and why she did it. And her story was really interesting. Every time I talk to Chelsea, I learn something new about her. And honestly, we could not stop talking. Like, it was so interesting. So I think you guys are going to get a lot out of her story. She's really the type of person who, if she's not happy with something going on in her life, she makes that shift and changes direction. And it's not easy, as you'll hear. But she makes sure that she's always aligned with what she truly wants in life. So go ahead and take a listen and let us know what you think. All right, so welcome to the podcast, Chelsea. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm excited. Me too. So I want to get right into it. I want you to tell us a little bit about your background and how you grew up. Okay, so I was born in the Bronx to a single mom uh, for the most part. And I grew up just like any other kid, I guess, who grows up in a kind of a broken home. Um, My mom worked very hard to support me and she did a great job. You know, my dad, I saw every other weekend, he did his best to kind of stay involved in my life. I guess his best, I don't know. But when I was five years old, my mom had my sister. And so once that happened, her dad became a close part of our lives as well. But my mom was still a single mom. So it was my mom, my sister and I all growing up in the Bronx. And she decided when I turned 10, that it would be a better environment for us to relocate to Florida. Okay. So I spent a lot of my youth, I guess you could say, in Florida growing up in like Tampa and the outskirts of Tampa. And so that's where I went to school, ended up going to college there, at USF, and then moved to Tallahassee to go to FSU out there. So that's pretty much in a nutshell um, right. how I grew up. Yeah. So what did you study at FSU? I studied criminal justice and psychology. Okay. And what made you decide to go down that path? I think I really wanted to be in the FBI for some reason back then. I, I I don't know why, but that's really what I wanted to do. I went to a high school with like a lot of adversity. Like I was, you know, the girl from the Bronx who moved to a very like suburban area in uh, Tampa. And it was a very awkward transition. I went through a lot, especially in high school with like a lot of really racist people. Like I moved to a very country place that I wasn't used to at all. So I think once I started seeing like a lot of injustices happening Mm -hmm. around me and I was exposed to things that I had never been exposed to in New York or just ever, you know, having to deal with those things, I was just like, this is not right. Like, I want to stand for something. Like, I want to do something. And so you think you have, when you're going to school and that's the kind of reality that you're having, you just want to make a difference. And so for me, I was like, maybe if I could be like, take psychology classes and try to be in the criminal justice system in some way, I could that, you know, leave an impact of some sort. And then graduation day or week as an assignment, our guidance counselors were like, you know, go to the Marshall Center and research, you know, apply for some jobs in your itch and your career. What do you call it? Diploma degree and apply for some jobs. That's when I had like my first heart attack because I, I'm just kidding. I didn't have a heart attack, but I saw that my degree was set to make like 50,000 a year. Right. And the max though, like with my degree, it was like at the top at, with my degree, it was like 50. And then the max with like a master's was like 89,000. And I was like, oh, this is not okay. Like I about <laughs> flipped shit that day and I didn't want to walk. I wanted to be done with the whole college experience. Like I was fed up. I was pissed that I had just went to school for four years and never really took the time to research how much money I was going to be making. You know, everybody just says, follow your passion, follow your passion, and you'll be rich. And so I was just doing that. And so for me to be hit with that, and I'm like, 
that reality, I was like, no, I did not just go to school to be trying to make $50,000 a year. So why do you think that you never really looked it up? Like, do you think you were just so focused on, let me just get the degree, get the degree? Yeah, because I didn't even want to be in college to begin with. Like, I hid my acceptance letter, like college. I didn't want to go to school, but I was a good student. You know what I mean? Like, I'm smart as hell. Like, I'm book smart. I like to read. Like, I like to learn new things. So it's cool. But the whole structure of having to go do something at a certain time just doesn't fit my lifestyle when it comes to work, school, life in general. Like, I don't like to have to do any kind of routine type of thing. So I don't know why I never looked it up. It just, when you're in college, your first thought isn't really money. It's like, hurry up and get this degree. And I really support myself and a family off of whatever I go to school for. Mm -hmm. I wasn't thinking like that. I guess I should have been, but you know. I mean, the same thing for me, right? Like, I feel like my parents were always like, just go to college, go to college, go to college. And when I graduated, like I studied economics and I was like, what the hell am I supposed to do now with an economics degree? So the same thing, like, I feel like, my mom, at least, she didn't go to college. So she was like, I'm going to make sure you do. And so that was like the big thing. And then at the end of it, I was like, okay, same with you. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. Yeah, I was like, okay. And then I graduated, like I reluctantly walked and like did the whole graduation thing. I was pissed. And, you know, when that was all said and done, it was a freaking hiring freeze in the government. So I wanted to be like a profiler. Like I went and got my degree, criminal justice psychology. I wanted to be like a you know, forensic profiler type of thing. And they completely like did away with that whole category of profiler in the FBI. So I was like, wow, what I went to school for, it no longer exists. Mm -hmm. And there's budget cuts in the government, like nobody could get jobs. So at that point in time, I realized like, wow, college, this whole thing is a business. And like, yeah, you do learn some fundamentals when you do go to college, you know, I'll never knock that. But Like, no, you don't have to go to school to be successful. And then, you know, right after that, I was forced to get a job to support myself. And obviously it wasn't going to be anything in my field because the Mm -hmm. government was having a freeze. So I got into sales. That was after doing my research, I was like, that has the best earning potential across the board. The money that you can make as a sales professional is very, I don't know, how do you say like flexible, lucrative? I don't know. You can kind of make your own paycheck type of thing. And so that furthermore pissed me off because I'm like, wow, now I'm working in sales with people who didn't even graduate high school. Like Mm -hmm. I could have been doing this a long time ago and supported myself and probably worked my way up to where I would have been making, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly what you mean. Yeah. So that's kind of how that journey went. But college was fun. You know, I don't knock it, but it's just definitely didn't make me who I am today. I'm just curious, would you recommend, like, let's say you have a daughter, right? When she gets like 18, 17, 18, would you recommend that she goes on the college route or would you recommend that she take a different route? I just had this conversation with my financial advisor a week ago because he was sitting, talking to me and he's like, look, we're going to put money in a mutual fund for, or not a mutual fund. We're going to do that too. But like, we're going to put a fund aside for summer's college fund. And every year, da, 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 by the time she's 18, she'll have some crazy number. Right. And he's, and I just looked at him. And I was like, I mean, that's great to put money aside for her, but like, mm, you're talking to two people who didn't have to do all that. And granted, I did, but I'm like, bro, we're we not really going to go that route. And he's like, look, whether you decide to put her through college or give her a Ferrari, it doesn't matter, but you should still have that fund set aside for her in case she right. decides to do that. And I'm all about it because that Ferrari is going to take her very far in life. So I'm going to do it, but not so she could go to college. And that's just the truth. No, I'm going to definitely teach her what she needs to know about certain things in business, obviously, like business is super important. And I would want to have her involved in certain things. So that way she can be cultured and be experienced. And a lot of the things that you learn in college, I'm for, I am all for, but I want to be very clear that it's not a forced thing. I want her to learn a trade more than anything. I want her to learn something of the that's going to bring money for a long, long time where people will be paying you for your knowledge, your information, your contribution for a long time. I wanted to teach her to work smarter, not harder. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. And at least, you know, if that money's aside, she can decide what she wants to do. If she yeah. wants to experience, if not. For sure. But yeah, I feel like there's been a shift in at least our generation's mentality. Like, listen, college isn't the only way to get ahead in life. I really feel like that. Nah, I just feel like, you know, our parents didn't really have it figured out in exactly. school. 
for them was such a like safe zone. And they just felt like, you know, go to school, go to school and you'll figure it out. They felt safe just pushing us off into college and, you know, they know we're in a positive environment where we're learning and this and that but it's like that's not the tools to success like you don't go to college and you walk out knowing what you want to do with life like you if you're not one of those people that are blessed to kind of know what you want to do already or have like come from a family of like a long line of doctors or lawyers or something like that but if you grow up how I grew up with like parents hustling to make it and like just the normal Bronx like people just trying to like really be, live the American dream and like just get by, you know, the right okay. way. They they're sending us to school to keep us focused. Exactly. You know? And they hope and pray that when we come out, we have it figured out. But I came out and I was like, "What the hell?" <laughs> like, I didn't have anything figured out. I was like, this, "Yeah, I got is there some type of like curtain I should pull back? Like, what am I supposed to do in my life now?" And they're lucky I didn't have any type of debt because I had scholarships. But my mom like legit forced me to go to college. Yeah. She wanted, you know, that life for me, you know, doc, even now, like it freaks her out what I do. Cause she's just like, it's so like mysterious to her. I get it. We're in different times. You know what I mean? Like we're different times, but you have to evolve with times and college is great for fundamentals. Yes. But everybody I know went to college, they're damn near, they're working a nine to five, but they hate. Yeah. They are still trying to really figure out their life. I feel like I want to give her classes on entrepreneurship, if anything, you know what right. I mean? Like how to survive entrepreneurship, how to learn mindset early. All those things are what should be taught. I don't feel like algebra and calculus, like who are we training here? I've never used these things. And it's just crazy. It's just crazy. Like teach your kids how to make their own money, how to produce things that will make them money forever without having to work so freaking hard and like Mm -hmm. dedicate themselves their whole every waking moment to slaving for another business owner and getting pennies as a result that's not cool agreed agreed so after you started working in sales did you have another moment where you were like hey I feel like this is not for me hell yeah (laughs) sales was never for me what (laughs) hell no I got fired like look me and every job just had its thing of course in the beginning when you're coming from not having a job you're super excited and you just want to be positive and want this to work and then your boss comes in on some real sucker shit and makes you want to be like hold on this is not my life you just asked me to go sweep a bathroom I have a degree first of all certain things you just like no 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 many times many times and I'm one of those people that like once that thought enters my mind it just begins to manifest and like multiply and literally just eat up at me until I have to walk out and be like, I'm done with this place. I can't, I can only fake it, but so long. And I've let go a lot of really, really good jobs, like jobs that I've made really good money at, Mm. but it's just like, this is not me. Like I've always worked in like male dominated industries. I've always had to deal with like so much crap. Even if the job itself was cool, it was always some like catty BS behind the scenes that just made going to work really an ugly experience or like a drag. And anything that you have to like peel yourself up out of bed to go do is just like not life. Like God would not want that for us, I don't think. You know, like to be miserable with the life that we're he's giving us every day. We should wake up like freaking thrilled to like be woken up, not wake up and be like, oh no, Lord, let me go back to sleep. (laughs) Not be my reality. Hold on 10 more minutes. Because I I wake up now and I mean, I wake up to my daughter like sucking on my nose and stuff like weird stuff now, but like (laughs) ultimately I'm very excited to wake up because I know I have a whole lot of work to do. And I know it's the more and quicker I get to it, the better of a day I'm going to have. And I've never had a job where I felt like that. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I've never had a job where I've woken up and been like, oh my God, I can't wait to rush to work today so that I can make my boss a lot of money. That was never a feeling I ever experienced. I guess. How did you transition from sales to your next kind of career venture? Well, actually what it was is that I was in a long distance relationship and I was in Atlanta doing sales for a long time. That wasn't enough they just started legalizing marijuana. So that helped. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> I mean, hey, I'm going to get it one way or another. That's just right. the facts. I'm just grateful that I found a legit way of doing it at the end of the day. Like, that's just what it is. I'm not ever going to be broke ever. So I'll dip and dabble. And I've done a lot of things that I'm not necessarily proud of. But it's like, I'm going to do what I have to do. Like I grew up with a single mother who raised two girls. Like my mom always had multiple jobs to put food on the table, you know? And it was just like, I was never going to be that girl that called on my mom to come and save me. So right. as a young adult going through it, yeah, I'm smart. I had my degrees and this and that, but like I had bills like any other kid or young adult, you mess up, you make mistakes, you deal with guys, like you mess up all along the road. And unless you kind of have your mom to come and bail you out, you have to thug it out, you know? Yeah. And of course my mom would have been there maybe, I'm sure. It just wasn't in my spirit to really burden my mother. So yeah. a lot of things I had to do on my own and I had to do what I had to do. So that's why I never like look back and be like, I'm not ashamed of it. It's just a matter of, I'm glad I was able to evolve from those things. Yeah. Because a lot of people didn't get to evolve in a positive way. A lot of people either get stuck, go to jail, go through different life paths. And I'm pretty proud of like the transitions I've made. But I would just say, you know, at the time I had a boyfriend who played overseas basketball and it was about that time in our relationship where we had been together long enough where he asked me to come and be with him in Europe. So I moved out there and that was my very first time my whole life not working. And kind of like living that dream of like being able to kick your feet up and literally be taken care of, like not have to do anything. And I had never experienced that before. I had always worked very, 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 very hard, whether it was to graduate early from college, whether it was working multiple jobs, whether it was doing, you know, hustles on the side, whatever it was, like I was never a lazy girl or like a girl that was okay with not having money. And so for me to be in that situation felt really, really good for a second. It was like, oh my God, like this is what them bitches be chasing. Okay, like get to kick my feet up for a second. But that lasted like literally no time. Like it's just not me, you know what I mean? And it felt good to know that, huh, like this feels good. But at the end of the day, it's like, I need my own. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I need my own. And that for me got very, very boring very quickly. And so because of that, the relationship didn't work out we had been together for like three and a half years. And that was like the moment we had been waiting for. And we finally experienced it. It wasn't one that I was really like, wow, I just went in the wrong direction again. But it took for me to take that leap and move to Europe for about eight months, I think it was, to realize like, okay, I got to completely shift my life around again. Right. Like it's scary as a woman to have to make all these big life-changing decisions by yourself. And then when shit hits the fan, it's kind of like, we got to figure it out. And if it works, yeah. great, if it doesn't, we're screwed. We got to figure it out. And I think that's what guys just don't understand. I know guys have to go through things too, but like women really go through things. Yeah, feel it. I know they go through things too, but it's like, you're a man though. Like we're women. Like yeah. we go through things that like, I don't know. I can't explain it. You know, only women really know. You know? It's like, we have to do things that men have to do. Men don't have to do the things that women have to do when shit hits yeah. the fan. Like yeah. they just care about money and they'll do whatever to get money. But like women go through a lot, mm -hmm. especially if you mix relationships into it and just different things. It's, we deal with a lot. So, you know, um, when I came back from that relationship, I realized I had to completely start over and kind of revamp where I was going to go in my life. And it was either going to be go to a nine to five or like really take a chance. Like I had already went like eight months without working. So I was like, do I really want to now jump back into corporate America, nine to five life? Or should I try to do something for myself, you know? Yeah. And so when I was like, you know what, I'm going to be a makeup artist full time. And that's how I actually got into makeup because it was always a hobby. It right. was always that like my mom was like, girl, that's not no real money. Like you could do that for fun on the side, like play play, but you can't do that for real, for real. So that was my moment where I was like, you know what? I'm coming back to nothing, but I have options. I'm going to create what I want next. And for me, I didn't even have savings or anything, but I think it was just a matter of, you know, I had enough to where I could thug it out until I got hired. And I remember I told my mom, I was like, mom, my birthday was coming up. Christmas was coming up. I was like, look, just give me money because I'm not getting a nine to five job until I get hired at Mac. I'm going to have to thug it out on like savings and gift money. But like, I'm not going to a nine to five. Like I'm yeah. going to get a job at Mac period. And 
I just started applying. For me, I know that's like nine to five, but it wasn't. It was like freelance. It's still right. like you're makeup that. artist for Mac. So that's that is my office. Job. You're not filing papers. Yeah. yeah. That was the only job I wanted. And I was like, I'm not going to settle until I get hired. And I ended up, I got an interview with this guy at Stonecrest, I think it was, mall in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. And yeah. And he was amazing. He was amazing. And he ended up being the person that literally like saved my life later on because I ended up working for him at a Mac counter for about a year, uh, like eight months. And it was great. You know, he gave me this job. He gave me an opportunity. Amazing man. His name is Tony Sanders. And after a few months of working with him, I was in an abusive relationship and nobody really knew it got really, really, really bad at home. And I just remember like, before I got Mac, there was that period where I didn't have a job and life was starting to get scary again. You know, now I didn't have a boyfriend. Right. Now it's like, oh my God, I just broke up with him. He's bitter. He's mad at me. Like now I'm on my own in Atlanta. Am I doing the right thing? I was just in a super stable relationship with a man eight years older than me. My whole life was like going crazy, right. you know? And now here I am in a new relationship, which is highly abusive and nobody really there to bail me out or like even agree with the person I was in a relationship with. It was just like a hot mess of a life that I came back to. And I remember finally things hit the fan when my ex actually interfered with my job. Because for me, it's like I was willing to let him put me through a lot of turmoil, a lot of chaos, a lot of destruction and toxic stuff. But when you mess with my money, when a girl goes through so much on her own mm. and every penny is one that she literally hustles for and fights for, for you to come in and risk my way of eating, that is when it like really triggered for me. And I was in that relationship for a year and it was right. like that super destructive. But one day he took it to the next level where he didn't let me go to work and he like locked me in the room and oh I couldn't go to work for days. It got to the point where the only thing I was thinking was my job. Like I loved Mac. Mac was my happy place from everything I was going through at home. And I just put in, I was like, no, you're not going to ruin this opportunity for me. Like, no. And so I remember when I finally got my phone back after that episode, I snuck my phone and I was emailing my boss. And I was like, look, this is the scariest moment for me. Like, I'm finally by myself. Like I have a second to text you. I haven't been to work. I'm sorry. It's not me. It's I'm in my room. I haven't been able to come, but I need you to know I'm going through this and like, please don't tell anybody, but if you could just help me move to California and help me get a transfer to Mac, like I'll be safe and I can run away and go. And I was like, but if you don't, help me get this job, I'm not going to leave because I refuse to start over again. And I think him reading that realized like, okay, this girl's really crazy. Like she's going to stay in this position if it means that she's going to be homeless. And I would have, because I had already lost so much. I had already started over so many times that the thought of starting over again from scratch, leaving your furniture, leaving your apart, all that with no job. I can't do that. Like my credit, I was such a response. I'm still such a responsible person that the thought of me like having unfinished business or like having to run away from a debt or something, I won't. Like I'm just not that type of person. And he wrote me back like right away and was like, Chelsea, holy crap. Like everything I had just told him, I think nobody, he did not expect that. And mm -hmm. I was like, you have to take this seriously. I don't know if I'll be able to text you again. I don't know. Please don't call my phone. Don't. I had to save him under a woman's name. It was the scariest thing I had ever dealt with in my life. And I just remember thinking, oh my God, if he texts me ever and my ex goes through it and sees this conversation, I don't know what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? But this was the only outlet I had. Like, I didn't want to like let anybody in on what was going on. And so luckily he was like, you know what? Like you need to be at Mac for a full year before you can even transfer. That's store policy. And I just prayed on this so freaking hard. That's why I'm such a fan of manifesting because it's like I've been doing this my whole life and it's yep. saved my whole life. And of course, God too. Like I'm not going to act like, I don't believe it's one or the other. Like I pray to God, I believe in God, but it's all about like speaking it out and really like feeling it and believing it. And I just prayed so hard and, you know, some way, somehow they went around company policy and they didn't give me a transfer per se, but they gave me like a direct open to interview, which right. you know, you have to 
through all kinds of hoops and hurdles. So I still had to prove myself in an interview. It was nothing guaranteed, but it was like, if you do prove yourself, then you can get the job. And so when he asked me what locations I wanted, I said, I didn't even know. I hadn't even thought that far. I just knew he need, I needed a transfer to get away from Atlanta. And I just blurted out Beverly Hills because that was the furthest place. I had never even been to Beverly Hills before. I just knew like, what I needed to get the hell on. And this, if I got far enough, he would never be able to get out there. And so he was like, now, hold on. You... So many thoughts probably went in his head. Like, is she making this up? Like, is she, as a makeup artist, that's a huge jump to go from a Mac counter for six months and get transferred to Beverly Hills. Like, there's people who've been with Mac for 20 years and don't get a transfer like that. You know what I mean? So for me to just come in and ask for that was like, are you lying about all this just to go to Beverly Hills? And so I was scared shitless. I'm not going to lie to you. I was like, look, I don't care where it is, but like, if it could be California, that would be great. And he's like, that's going to be a reach, you know? But they came back and they got me interviews and I ended up getting the job. So nice. Yeah. Thank God. Because I was literally on the first thing smoking. My ex ended up going to jail and I had four days to get my whole entire life packed up into a two door car. Basically, once again, start over in Los Angeles by myself with nothing but a couple garbage bags of clothes that could be, yeah, it was so bad. It was so, so bad. Like my life really felt like it had flipped upside down. And so I think that's why I am the way I am about money. It's not like money, 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 but it comes across as that. But it's just because for me, I don't even buy things. Like I don't even spend money on anything. Like I'm so simple. I'm very, very chill. But for me, it's just, knowing that that equals security because when you've been through some of the things that I've been through it's like just knowing that I have that cushion just makes me know I never have to deal with abuse again I never have to deal with literally anything to me that's power and it's like I don't ever try to like wait I don't act like that you know that's not my goal but in my mind it's like you're okay your babies are gonna be okay like you're, everybody around you will be okay as long as you maintain money in your account and okay. Sometimes it has its shitty moments when you think about it like that, but it's like, I'd rather have it than not have it because I've been not had it and I put myself through crazy stuff to get it, yeah. you know? I feel like it's a tool. It's a tool to be able to use in whatever ways you need to for your life. So I think by you saying I need to have money, it's like, I need to make sure that I have enough so that I can take care of myself. And I'm never in a situation where I'm forced to be with someone because they're taking care of me. So no, I think that a lot of us as women nowadays, understand that and we feel that I hope so I'm trying to get people to understand like it doesn't matter what situation you're in right now like if you're in a happy marriage or a happy relationship anything like your health anything could happen to where you're no longer needed at that nine to five or where your husband may not want you no more or where anything could god forbid happen and it's like you just have to have a way of making your own money without the need of somebody else saying you can make this money right now yeah like have to find a way whatever it is for you I don't know I've just been in so many crazy situations that the only one I can count on is myself like the, if I'm gonna bet on anything it's gonna be that I'm gonna find a way to figure it out one way or another yeah. you know and I just can't afford it to be the other way because when you leave your life into someone else's hands and it's kind of just like a free-for-all you never know how your life can end up you know you have to be the one that's like guiding your mm -hmm. path and you don't have to always know the right answers nobody knows the right answers but you have to be willing to like i guess not stop searching you know and just yeah. stay at it. so what happened once you moved to beverly hills and you got the job at mac how was that transition well i wish it was beverly hills that i moved to i moved to the freaking <laughs> <laughs> um, I moved to shit me. Yeah, it definitely wasn't Beverly. No, that was like, <laughs> no, I moved to Koreatown. Okay, it wasn't the hood. I shouldn't say that. But let's just say coming from what I came from in Atlanta, I was living decent in Atlanta. And it's easy to do that. You know, it's so, so cheap. Easy. Yeah. Uh, you're like, wait, what? This money can get me what? Like, no. So that was a very rude awakening. I actually lived in a motel for a few months when I first moved out here, like a super ratchet hotel, uh, motel right by the airport, LAX. And I mean, I just thugged it out. It didn't even matter to me at that time. Honestly, I was safe and it was sunshine every day. Like every day I would just get out. I just felt so good. It felt so liberating, so free. I had never felt so free. I mean, I was just... 
I don't know. I can't even explain it. It was just like, okay, you're safe now. Yes, you have to figure out a lot, but like, there's something about just being able to start over that I hadn't. I had started over so many times, but not in a brand new place. Like West Coast, so much was different. It was like coming from Atlanta to a whole new vibe of California. This is something as a little girl I had always dreamed about was California, California. So to be here under the circumstances I was under was not good but there was still something about it that was like very magical for me like this is where i'm supposed to be i'm gonna figure this out one way or another and i stayed in the motel and then finally one day i got a call from mac counter they told me to come and interview and that's when i was just like oh my god it happened but it didn't happen right away you know like so i was living off of very little like really thugging it and i didn't even know if that call would come i was just trying to be as frugal as i could possibly be until I could figure out what job I was going to get and finally like they called me for an interview I went in killed the interview and they offered me a position and I was just like oh my god you just don't even know how bad I needed this and so that went well Um, I worked there until maybe eight months or six months or something like that and then that's when I got picked up for my first reality show to do makeup on set yes thank you Jesus so I ended up leaving Mac and I went on like a tour did my first set came back and ever since then it was just like all celebrities it was it just took off after that so thank god because that you know that's what I always became a makeup artist for that was like what the goal and so for it to happen so quickly I just felt like that was god you know I had went through so much and now it was just like you know I got you again like one of the things I noticed about your story is like you have the ability to Like if anything in your life feels forced or it feels like it's not right, you're like, this isn't right. I need to go in another direction. And as soon as you go in that direction, it feels like it just kind of, the steps just work out for you. You know what I mean? Well, is that what it seems like? Because Lord, let's (laughs) pretend that that happened. Because I had to let some people on my team go today and it was a big crush, right? I mean, everything, what you just said is exactly what I've been kind of not saying all day because I want to say that and believe that, but it's like when you're going through it you're in a moment, yeah, you're like tornado city, like your whole world is just like, what the fuck are you doing? And so when you text me like six o'clock, I was like, this is like the worst, but I, this is great because I needed to talk today. This is great yeah. therapy. Because it's hard as a business owner, you know, we have to do things sometimes that are uncomfortable. But I guess, you know, nobody's ever pointed that out. I never realized, like, that is a trait maybe I have to, like, when I do get uncomfortable, I be quick to, like, shake it. And it's because, obviously, I've had to make that rough choice many times in my Mm -hmm. life when it's come from people that I've loved the most, you know, that I've had to like really break free from. And so it's like a bittersweet thing, I guess, ability to be able to do that because it's not that I'm guarded. It's just, I'm quick to know when things are no longer a fit, you know, but it's very uncomfortable for me to, to not a fun feeling. Yeah. Not to say that it was easy for you or that anything you said seemed easy. It's just that it's almost this sense of like, I can't go back to that option. Yeah. Even if this is like the hardest thing in the world, I can't go back. And that's really admirable. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people would get so afraid of, well, I don't know what's about to come. that They never leave. They would still be in that sales job that you were in today, right? Yeah. And they would still be in that those up, they would still be in that abusive relationship, you know, and that's why I talk to so many girls. I've had to take a step back because when I talk about it, it's like a lot, I end up getting a ton of messages. Like I'm in an abusive relationship right now. Like, what do I do? And it's like, I'm not equipped, not that I don't want to be there for anybody, but it's like, I'm not equipped to get the overflow of that type of energy because I'm energy so big and it'd be different if it was just me in one conversation but it ends up being like 20 dms back to back and next thing you know i'm spending two hours crying my eyes out in the back and my daughter's here like it's a very real thing because right. it's things i'm not even all the way for sure healed on you know what i mean mm-hmm. so it's like to talk about it is difficult especially when you know there's so many people that need to hear it and then they come out and want to pour it on you to help them and you whatever but it's just like oh gosh like hold on don't bring that back yet you know but yeah I mean you have to learn how to be like that the sooner the better it's never easy but you have to know what's good for you at the end of the day and it's never easy it's definitely never easy like if you don't put your foot down for yourself who will you know we only have one life and yeah I'm not saying at the first sign of anything shaky get to running it's not that you have to be resilient you have to be willing to ride the wave a little bit but you know what's for you and what's Mm -hmm. not for you you know when something 
something's toxic, you know when something doesn't feel right, and you know when it's worth fighting for. We just convince ourselves of things sometimes that aren't really the case because it feels better. It's more comfort, yeah. you know? But I've never really been scared of the switch up. I always try to embrace the switch up. It's just scary as hell when you're going through <laughs> it. That's a yeah. fact. But once you've gone through it a few times and you bounce back, you know it's just kind of like the way things go and it helps across the board in relationships. It helps in business because you don't let every little break literally break you or every little bend doesn't break you. You know what I mean? You right. learn like, oh, I've been here before. Don't worry. It'll pass. Like, Yeah, exactly. If you never go through shit, then you're just like the slightest thing throws you off and you're like, I give up. I'm done. This business doesn't work. This relationship, this marriage doesn't work. These kids don't work because you've never fought for anything. Yeah. And my whole life fighting something, someone for me, it's like, I don't give up easy. But when I know it's a lose, lose battle, it's like, I'm not going to let you, you know what I mean? Like, nah, you're not going to yeah. do that. Too. I got that. That makes perfect sense. It's something that I'm trying to, as an entrepreneur, a new entrepreneur, I'm trying to like fight through every battle and not give up so hard. But anyway, I want to like transition into how you got into what you're doing now. But first I want to hear a little bit more about like, what was it like being a makeup artist and what made you decide that you wanted something different? I loved being a makeup artist. That for me was my passion, my drive for such a long time. Like since I was a little girl, it was something I wanted to do. I loved beauty. I loved anything glam and all of that. And then I got my opportunity to work with celebrities pretty early in my career and it felt amazing. It was great. But then it was just like, now what? You know what I'm saying? Right. Like now what? And then it's like, the people in my industry who were kind of like my peers, their goal was to find the next best celebrity to kind of be on tour with or to kind of like come up with. And I was just like, yeah, but like, I don't need y'all to like come up. I don't want to have to like beg and, and kiss ass and do all that and like hope and pray I find the right celebrity who's coming up at the same time and meets me and begs me to be their makeup artist. Like, there's a lot of what ifs, you know what I'm saying? Like I felt it was something that no matter how great of a makeup artist I was, there could be an op a possibility that I never meet that celebrity that says, hey, Chelsea, I want you to be on my private jet and be my personal makeup artist. And the only people I would really want to have done that for are people on the level of like J-Lo, like real Rihanna, Beyonce. And then it's like, do I really want to do their makeup though? No, I don't. I want to be their homegirl maybe, but not like, right. I don't want to be their makeup artist. Like, right. Okay. I don't want to be in coach while they're in a first class because I'm their makeup artist. Or these are people, once I started being in that field and I started doing makeup for other celebrities who are like my age type of thing, it's like, you start to be like, hold on, why am I choosing to be on this side? Yeah, yeah. it's, I love makeup and they don't. They're the talent. I'm the help. But it's like, why can't I be the, the talent though? So granted, you know, like the whole reality thing, it, it's not my thing. Like I don't have to do that. But it just started making me realize, am I doing this because of passion and passion only? Or what do I really want out of this? Because is this really feeding my passion? Like for real, for real? Not really. Yeah, I'm doing a job, I'm getting paid well for it, and I get to be around the glitz and the glamour of their lifestyle. But if that's what I love so much, the glitz and the glamour, why don't I find a way to make that for my own lifestyle? You right. know what I'm saying? And so I think once I realized that the only thing that was stopping me from living that lifestyle, it wasn't the lights and the camera and the action. It was the money, you know what I'm saying? Right. And there's no way I was ever going to be able to make that celebrity money to live that celebrity lifestyle if I was the makeup artist, unless I was a makeup artist for like a Cardi B or a J-Lo. And even then, I don't know if they get paid like I get paid, to be honest. You know what I'm saying? So right. for me, it was just like... The passion was no longer really in it for me. I enjoyed doing makeup, but more so it's like when you're on these big jobs, there's a, such a fine line. Are you the makeup artist? Or are you the personal assistant? Are you the friend? It's like you have to do things that you don't want to do. No matter what, you have to smile on your client's face. You have to show up early. You have to compliment them. You have to clean up. What if you're not in a good mood that day? What if you don't want to have to fake nice and ask about this and that? Like, exactly. what if you don't want to? So for me, it was just like, I'm, this is no longer like really driving my soul. It's fun. But like, I want to do something where I can enjoy waking up every day and do it for myself, you know? Yeah, yeah so. that makes sense. So how did you actually get into dropshipping? Was that the next thing after makeup? 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, Brandon came home from prison. My boyfriend, who was my best friend at the time, he actually knew the guy in Atlanta as well. He knew all my boyfriends. We've been best friends for like nine years. Right. But we were friends. And so he ended up going to prison for something that caught up with him from way back. And he relocated to uh, California because his baby, he ended up having a baby. His baby lives in Fresno, California. And so he moved out here and I was still in Atlanta. He was locked up though. So he hadn't moved out here yet. But while he was locked up, we stayed connected very close always. And it just so happened that I was going through all of that with my boyfriend at the time. And I was just like, I need to move. I'm about to move. And he's like, where are you moving? I was like, I think I'm going to move to Cali, like LA, you know, that's the furthest. Like, and so he's like, well, I'll be out soon. And that's where I'm going to be because of the baby, you know, she's in Fresno. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Didn't even think anything of it. Anyway, we ended up linking up right after he came home and we were together every day since. And we decided we would be in a relationship and give it a shot. And, you know, during those times, we never really put much thought into how life would be now that he was freshly home from prison, now that he has a child, now that, you know, we we live in Los Angeles. Both of us, he had never lived in LA before. He lived in Atlanta, same situation as me. So for him to come out to like cost of living, like everything just different, it was a big shocker. Like, well, we got to figure things out fast, you know? And yeah, I was making money as a makeup artist, but it's like, unless I was actively like on these clients, like, Hey, uh, you know, do you need me for this show? Or like, you know, Hey girl, like, Hey, you know, unless I was really out in the mix networking and this and that, it's easy for you to get forgotten about in this industry. You got to really be out there and you know, Hollywood is, they want the makeup artists with the most followers, with the most clout, with the most friends, you know, it's very, and that wasn't really my thing when you're in love and you, especially like new love and it's not about Hollywood and all that, your life's hurt. Like, you want to be in your real world over here. Right. You don't want to have to force yourself to go get a thousand dollar outfit to go to an award show just to say you went there. Like I'm not with that Hollywood stuff. I'm only with it if it makes sense financially, but that's not me. I'm not fake. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I was friends into a new relationship and I wanted to figure out how we could make this work. And so we had a lot of opportunities closed because he was a felon. And we, he couldn't find like a good paying job, um, nine to five type. And he was never the nine to five type anyway. So it's like, you know, he went, we had to figure out how we were going to make money legitly and something that could compensate for the lifestyle that he was used to at least somewhat, you know? And so for us, it forced us to have to get creative, start reading books, doing research and finding out what are other people doing in this day and age that is allowing them to work remotely and not have to like how is this possible that people are not having to go to work every single day and still make a lot of money so drop shipping stood out to us right away we just jumped in like i knew something about it right away was just like yeah you should try this like i think you can figure this out and yeah. we did awesome and so how long has it been now since you started so it's been two and a half years since i've been doing drop shipping we started two and a half years ago okay and a lot of stores fail a lot do or several do very well but a lot of failures you know like when you're starting a new business and you don't know what the heck you're doing you have to be ready for the roller coaster you know then you pay people who know what they're doing who have done it and they can show you the ropes and show you what not to do and they can save you a whole lot of headache a whole lot of money and I learned that pretty early on so I'm fortunate that I made pretty good business decisions early um I'm just not a fan of like bumping my head too many times and, you know, doing the same thing over again. I'd be like, okay, I'm tired of this. Like, how can I, no, this doesn't feel good no more. So I'm quick to be like, can somebody show me how to do this, please? And I'll pay you. And yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't have time. (laughs) Um, So it must have started to go well really early on for you to continue. Right. Yeah, we made our first six figures within six months of running wow. our first business. And that was a shocker because I had never made money like that before in all mm-hmm. these jobs I had, whether it was, you know, I, I had well paying jobs, but no, never in such a fast period of time, never from sitting on my couch and not reporting to a nine to five. You know what I mean? Right. Like never being able to do it from the comfort of my own home with my boyfriend, seeing him every day, chilling. It was just a totally different, like everything. I was like, oh my God, wait, like there's people that have been doing this for a very long time. And I'm just now doing this and this worked. 
I was instantly like pissed. Like, I wish I would have did this 10 years ago. So now <laughs> it's just, you know, it, geez, ignorance is bliss, you know, yeah. you, but that's why when you're exposed to something, if it makes sense and it piques your interest, just jump because you'll be so mad at yourself if you try it and it actually like you figure it out and it does well for you. It doesn't matter what industry it is. You'd be so mad that you didn't do it sooner, you know? Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. I'm curious to know, like, what are some of the reasons you think you were successful? Obviously, you mentioned that you had a mentor help you through, but what are some of the other things that you think helped you? Uh, because not everyone that starts job shipping with a mentor is successful. So what do you For think? Sure. Oh, my gosh. I would say... You know, and that's so true because I am guilty. I'm like a course hoarder. I always say that because I buy a lot of yeah. education. I invest a lot and I'm not one of those people that like blame other people though. Like I've never been like mad at my mentors because I know it's my fault right away. Like I know. Actually, like before you caught, I was sitting in front of a course that I've been meaning to take for a long time. That was a lot of money. And when I remembered my, actually, I remembered because my bookkeeper was like, hey, what's this charge from like four months ago? And I was like, I don't know. What charge is that? And when I really looked, I was like, oh, what happened to that course? Like, oh my God. So that's actually what I was doing before we started this call. I was trying to like touch base with a six month old course that I paid six grand for that I can't believe I haven't even opened. So it's like, I'm guilty of it too. But I would just say like, when it's something that you know really piques your interest, you don't want to, it's just like a good book or a good magazine or a good movie. Like nothing can peel you from it if it really sparks your interest. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean, we all have a different why. I talk about this in everything that I do. We all have a different purpose, a different reason for doing the things we're doing. For me, when I started drop shipping, my why was tremendous. Like my why was really, really big. And my why was because I wanted to show my boyfriend that we could really figure this out, like without mm -hmm. having a job. I didn't want to have to go to the corporate, go the corporate America route. I didn't want to have to um, go back to doing makeup or anything I didn't want to do. And him, vice versa, you know, same thing. And so we wanted to this to work so bad that I think we just didn't stop. So many people, you know, I've worked with a lot of people and I mean, they'll admit like, you know, I fell off. I got distracted. I'm going through a breakup right now. I'm moving. I get it. Like, I'm not mad at it. We all yeah. go through life. We all have to do different, we all have different responsibilities, kids, but it's just a matter of staying consistent, whatever that means to you, whether it's every single day or every other day consistently, but whatever it is, you have to stick to some type of schedule that you create for yourself and really just zone in during those moments you mm -hmm. know what I mean and yeah. for, trust me it's hard to stay consistent especially in 20 it, like where we're at now with so many different distractions it's hard but you have to the people that don't win at this are just the ones that gave up too soon like mm -hmm. it's just a matter of if you consistently do the right thing every single day you're going to get to the finish line eventually like mm -hmm it's impossible. You're on the right track. It just doesn't work out for some people. If you have blonde hair and blue eyes, or if you're seven feet tall, <laughs> it works. It'll work. It just, I can't tell you exactly what day of the month it's going to happen because I don't know your life. I don't know what you're doing at 8 AM. I don't know what you're doing at 9 AM. Like I can't sit right. here and say, I know, I don't know your life, but if you put in the work, you're going to get the results. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just as simple as that. It's just people be like, I put in four hours of work. Where are the results? <laughs> I mean, it's not coming after four hours. Maybe after eight hours it'll come, but you can't give up. You just can't. So I'm curious to know, when you first started, how many hours a week would you say you worked on your store? 24. 24 hours <laughs> a day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just like right now. This is, yeah. That's my life right now. And it's a joke. Like, I'm never not working. And that's the struggle. Yeah. That's why I'm not the best example for anything right now, because I mean, as an entrepreneur, well, you know what? I don't know. I, I guess my mentors would disagree. They'd be like, no, you should be working like this right now. You know, you just started your, your other business. So I get it, but it's just like, I didn't do this to be a slave to this. So the goal yeah. is to go really, really, really hard in the beginning. Do whatever the heck you need to do. Sacrifice, do whatever. It's not going to feel the greatest. But until things are super smooth and you can afford mentally, financially to be able to step away and let things kind of run themselves mm -hmm. or automate them or delegate. You have to be all in. You have to be the one 
put in 24 hours in. And if not 24 hours, that's fine. At the time, I didn't have a job. So it's like, what else am I going to be doing with my time? I should be doing it 24 hours if I had nothing else to make money from. You know what I mean? But the average person, like with a job or something, obviously, how can you put in 24 hours? But I would say after you get home from your nine to five, Maybe after you shower, eat dinner, cook dinner, put the kids to bed, maybe for an hour and a half, you can go through a course or you can read an ebook or you can do product research or you can do something. It's the people who don't ever take initiative to put any of that time into learning something that they stay stuck. But it's just a matter of not tapping out when you get home from your nine to five. Okay. Nice. I have one more question for you. So what is going on with Chelsea now? Like, what's next for you? Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Honestly, like, I have so much on my mind. You just don't even know. I talked to this guy today who wants me to enroll in his $8,000 course. And he's wow. like, you got a lot on your mind, huh? And I was like, get the hell off my phone right now. <laughs> it's just a lot. My goal is to just keep trying to inspire women. And I feel like I'm just on this mission to do everything in my power to expose them to every and any way I know of making money. And so my goal is just to make the experience as good as I possibly can while I introduce these women to different forms of business. And I feel like it's just such a heavy not obligation, but such a heavy responsibility that I feel so honored to have been that I'm in to be teaching people. But it just makes me want to make sure, like, go harder. You know what I right. mean? Especially, yeah. like, I talk to so many women who are just like me or who are just like me a few years ago and who are really just, like, believing in themselves and following their dreams. And, like, it inspires me back. So, in essence, it just makes me want to make sure I'm doing things to the best of my ability. But I'm also, like, a perfectionist. I'm also very, very hard on myself. So it's, like, what's next for me is just more different things that I can do to help people. We are planning, like, a... Well, there's a lot of things I probably shouldn't talk about, but a lot of big things. I don't know. A lot of really, really good things. Um, Penny's World is always going through different updates. I'm always investing in myself with the sole purpose of giving back to my students is what it boils down to. So I'm very busy with education for myself as well as being an instructor. So I have a lot of students, as you know, and then I'm also still learning different things as well, which is just constant. My brain is like, which (laughs) But I have a lot in store. I want to bring a portion to Pennies to Gold where I do interviews with different entrepreneurs who are at a certain level of their business. That Mm -hmm. way I can bring exposure to not only the highs of business, but also the lows of business and the dips that you're going to encounter. And just like Mm -hmm. what you're doing. Because I think it's very motivational. It's very empowering for when you are going through a drop shipping course to be real. And when you have your dip moment and your down moment, you can click on module eight and see interviews with other women just like you. And they can show you how they persevered through hard times. So yeah. that's something that I am looking forward to adding to Pennies to Gold in the very near future. Um, that's going to be called the Honey Pot. So if you do an interview with me for that purpose, it'll be our Honey Pot section of pennies to gold so i'm excited about that i have a journal coming out around my birthday at the end of the month it's a manifest journal it's kind of goes hand in hand with our manifest class um a lot of people are so curious like they love hearing from my boyfriend he's kind of like more chill you know he helps me run things on the back end and lets me be the face of pennies to gold and all that but we obviously started this business together um drop shipping and so he knows just as much about it as i do he's just more of like the you know he lets me do my thing but a lot of people have been asking like they love him and they just are always asking me questions to ask him and i'm like you know what no we're not doing that no more. Y'all don't want to ask him yourself, okay? Like, he has his own Instagram. Go over there and talk to him. So we decided to do a class together for the first time on my birthday. So November 21st, I'm going to do a class on manifesting. We're going to teach people how we have manifested our lives, like our dream life, everything that we've manifested since we've been together has come true. I've written it all down when I first started like really manifesting at the top of the year after I had my daughter and literally everything, if it hasn't happened, it's like in the midst of happening. It's like currently happening. And so I just want other people to know how to kind of tap into 
asking the universe, asking God for exactly what it is that you want to show up in your life. And we're tr- like conditioned to think it's so wrong to like, you know, be humble, be humble, humble, you know, you can still yeah. you know, be a good person and be a giving person, a loving person, whatever, but there's nothing wrong for having high expectations for yourself because only you know what you're capable of. And, you know, you shouldn't feel wrong for expecting greatness from yourself or wanting greatness for yourself and trying to attract greatness to yourself. And if you live life with this mediocre mindset of like complacency and like, I have just enough, I have what I need. What? Like, yeah, I have what I need. I'm thankful for what I have, but I need a whole lot more. Like, no, and it's okay to have that. You know, if you're going to tell the universe that you're comfortable with the bare minimum, then why would you ever be open to receiving an abundance of blessings if you've already put out there that you're comfortable with nothing? So yes, be grateful for where you are in your journey, but it's important to know that there's nothing wrong with claiming what's yours and what you want to be yours. And I feel like more people need that um, reassurance that it's okay to ask and it's okay to literally manifest your life. And so that class is um, on my birthday and that's pretty much it. Just getting ready for quarter four, you know, it's a lot of online shopping happens in fourth quarter with Black Friday, with Cyber Monday, holidays. So it's a big time for drop shippers, for e-commerce people, everybody. So just focusing on business and just, you know, being a new mom. My first real Christmas was summer. Now that she's a little bit, got some more uh, meat on her bones, you know, <laughs> we can like really enjoy this Christmas. Last Christmas was really tough. So, you know, just living life and trying to inspire people every day to be their best selves. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Chelsea. It was awesome. I really appreciate talking with you every time we speak. It's always a great time. It really is. And I learn something new every time we talk about your thank life story. You. Yeah. Well, I learned something new too, because I don't really talk to many people real real life. Like I'm always working like this I talk to people yes but not about me you know what I mean like I talk to people about them and their problems or how to help them with drop shipping and business but like I don't ever talk about like some of the questions you ask I've never even been for my holy crap like wow how did I grow so I enjoy this (laughs) definitely like talk therapy for me and I hope um being transparent helps people who might be in similar situations just to know that like you're not your past we've all been through it I didn't grow up with no like magical experience you know I'm not even talking to my mom right now like it's a lot as humans we go through real life stuff and it's so many things can easily set us back in life and put us in a dark place or make us want to give up or you know make us say f this it's not even worth it but only you know what it you know you know that you were counting on yourself at the end of the day. So it takes a strong person, but you know, you got to fight through it. Every day is not going to be sunshine and roses. You got to just keep going and keep a strong, positive mindset. And if the people around you aren't breathing life into you, then you need to turn to yourself and hopefully you can learn to be that for yourself. Because we're all we've got, right? And that's really yeah, what that's it was. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for listening to The Glow Up Podcast. Do you want to know more about us? Check out our website at theglowuppodcast.com and follow us on Instagram at glowuppodcast. See you next time.